Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 5b of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 131, the question is 11. It's the first honours question that we've dealt with so far. And it reads, the diagram shows particles of 2 and 3 kilos lying on a horizontal table in a straight line perpendicular to the edge of the table. They are connected by taut, light, inextensible string. A second such string, passing over a fixed light pulley at the edge of the table, connects the 3 kilo particle to another of mass 3 kilos hanging freely under gravity. The contact between the particles and the table is rough with a coefficient of friction of 1 quarter. Show on separate diagrams the forces acting on the particles when released from rest and calculate the common acceleration and the tension in terms of gravity. So please watch my videos or if you haven't watched them already please watch the videos on Newton's third law, the masses rope and finally the video on the introduction of uh, vectors for pulley and rope systems. So if you if you if don't looked at those you should understand what I'm about to do. So let's look at the weight vectors. We get negative 3 g j hat. In actual fact, sorry, I should also say please look and note the gravity vector, the unit vectors and the coefficient of friction. So we also get negative 3 g j hat here for the weight and we get negative 2 g j hat there. The particles on the table are subject to Newton's third law so they have an opposite reaction going this direction here from the table and this is uh, 3 g j hat and this is 2 g j hat. The next thing we're going to do is look at the acceleration of the system. So it can go any way and I'm going to suggest it's going to go in the positive i and negative j direction. So we're going to have an acceleration of um, a i hat acceleration of negative a j hat. Alright, now let's look at the tensional forces. So the tensional forces are equal in magnitude only because the mass of the rope is zero. So I have a tensional force here of negative t1 i hat and a tensional force here of t1 i hat. Tensional force here of t2 i hat and a tensional force here of t2 j hat. Now, finally, we're going to look at our frictional forces, and these are going to oppose the motion, so they're going to go both both in the negative i direction, like so. And we should know at this stage that the friction is equal to the normal force times the coefficient of friction. So, in the case of the 2 kilo mass, it's going to be 2g times a quarter, which is equal to a g over 2, and for the 3 kilo mass, it's going to be 3g times a quarter, which is 3g over 4. Now, the next thing we need to do is to uh, to just manipulate the, the, the formula in front of you. And uh, we're going to use Newton's second law, which says that the sum of forces on a particle is equal to its mass times the acceleration vector. Alright, so I'm going to do these pretty straightforward here. Uh, if you look at the, the 2 kilogram mass, you're going to find the following. You're going to have T1 minus the frictional force which is g over 2 is equal to its mass times its acceleration vector. Now, one second there. They're all of course in the i hat direction. That's because the the j hat vectors 2g j hat and negative 2g j hat are just going to cancel. So I'm going to call that equation 1. Then we're going to have on the 3 kilo mass you're going to have t2 minus its frictional force which is 3g over 4 minus the tensional force t1 is going to be equal to its mass which is 3 times the acceleration and they're all in the i hat direction as well so that's going to be equation number 2 and finally if you look at the 3 kilo mass hanging over the side you're just going to get that t2 minus 3g is equal to minus 3a they're all in the j hat direction and I'm going to call that formula number 3. Alright, that's pretty straightforward stuff. Now I don't want, excuse me, I don't want to um, clutter the diagram any more than I have to. So just bear with me and I'll clean this up. So the three formula which we had were as follows. We had the T1 minus G over 2 is equal to 2A. We had T2 minus 3G over 4 is equal minus T1 is equal to 3A. And we had T2 
minus 3g is equal to negative 3a. And like I said, I'd label them 1, 2, 3. So we're trying to find the acceleration vector. So what we need to do is get rid of our tensional vectors and put them in terms of a. So if we rearrange equation 1, we're going to get equation 4 stating that t1 is equal to 2a plus g over 2. And if you rearrange uh, 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 excuse me, equation 3, we're going to get that 5, I'm going to say t2, is equal to 3g negative 3a. So now what we have is both tensional forces in terms of the acceleration. So I'm going to put 4 and 5 into, question, into equation number 2. So we're going to get the following. 3g minus 3a minus 3g over 4 minus 2a minus g over 2 is equal to 3a. Alright, that's just uh, that's pretty straightforward. So if you multiply across by 4 and add everything together, you're just going to get that a is equal to 7g over 32, which is correct. Alright, so we're doing pretty well so far. The next thing we need to do is get the tensional forces. But we already have T2 and T1 in terms of A and G. So let's get T1 is equal to 2 times 7G over 32 plus G over 2. So if I want this to be 32, I have to multiply across by 16. And if you add that together, you're just going to get um, 30G over 32, which is equal to 15G over 16, which is correct. Alright, so that's pretty straightforward. That's tensional force number one. And apply the same procedure for tensional force number two. So we're going to get T2 is equal to 3 times G minus 3 times 7G over 32. Like that. Um, Alright, so look, if you do the same, same procedure there that we did a moment ago, it's going to get the answer 75G over 32 which is also correct. Alright, that's pretty straightforward stuff. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.